Go Mouse Scouts, episode 128, bonus. You're listening to Go Mouse Scouts, where we're dedicated to helping you and your kids have a great time at the Disney parks, whether you're just starting out or a seasoned pro. My name is Chris, and this is a bonus episode. We have been uh, making a guest appearances on other people's podcasts, and I thought it might be a cool idea to kind of do the same thing for you know those that uh, um, for for the people whose shows we're being on for us to kind of do a Disney um, community spotlight, and so. Uh, this is kind of the start of that. We're going to invite, um, other people in the Disney community who are, you know, making podcasts or YouTube channels or blogs, uh, basically people who are creating, uh, Disney fan content. And so in this, uh, this, uh, first episode of, um, you know, that, uh, that spotlight, we have, Joey McGurr from the Disney Hack Podcast. And uh, so he it was super fun to talk to. I met him online. Um, he joined our, our Facebook group. And, um, you know, he started talking about uh, doing this podcast. And uh, we quickly became friends. And he's a really cool person. And he's got a wonderful show that you guys should definitely check out. But first... Let's uh, listen to this talk with uh, Joey McGurr as we get to know him a little bit, and uh, he'll go ahead and tell you guys what his show is all about. So let's jump on in. So we're we're just going to kind of go through a uh, kind of a lightning round of sorts, and then I'm going to have you talk a little bit about your show. So... uh, um, I, I know I, I uh, told you the questions beforehand, so hopefully these have had a little bit of time to marinate. Um, but the first question is, who is your favorite Disney dragon? Well, it has to be the Reluctant Dragon. The Reluctant Dragon. Okay. Tell me about the Reluctant Dragon. So the Reluctant Dragon is a story that Disney created as an attempt to tell the story of how the Disney studio operates. So mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever, have you seen this short, the, the reluctant dragon? I think I have. Was it, um, it's, it's a, is it a recent one? No, it's actually, uh, it's, it's from the fifties or sixties. Okay. I have not seen it then. There I'm going to have to check a, that one out. Yeah, there was an episode of, uh, you know, uh, you know, one of Walt's Sunday night shows mm-hmm. where, there was a f- famous gentleman at the time. I'm, I'm forgetting his name at the moment, but he's supposed to have a meeting with Walt Disney. And so he goes down to the Walt Disney studio to have this meeting. And while he's there, he is sort of uh, booted around at different departments, the ink and paint and the sound studio and the, the artist studio where they're doing real life, uh, you know, sketches. And, and he's kind of learning how the Disney studio operates. And in, in true Disney fashion, it's, filmed very you know it's it's very clean and aesthetic and it's good to look at it sounds good the you know the guy that does the voice of donald duck is doing a voice recording and you see him get all flustered and frustrated and he's you know yelling like donald duck and uh you know and and this guy's kind of a, a, a bumbling character he's a comedian of the time and um and at one point he stumbles into a room where these animators are doing the final pieces on a short film and it's mm-hmm. the reluctant dragon. And then they just go from showing these, these, you know, stills and all of a sudden it begins to move and you end up going through the story of the reluctant dragon. And it's the story about a dragon who's terrorizing a town. He's not really, he's, he's nearby. So people think he's going to terrorize the town. And so they decide to pick a, a, a valiant knight to go and slay the dragon. And there's a, a young boy that lives in the village and the boy ends up friending the dragon and he convinces this noble knight who's actually an older gentleman, a a very esteemed older, uh, you know, much older, you know, uh, uh, knight. And they all decide to become friends and they put on a show where they pretend to have the knight fight the dragon and defeat him so that all the people will think that the knight's a hero. And it's just an adorable story. (laughs) You can probably find it on YouTube. Oh, interesting. I I, I saw it most recently because I have the Disney collection DVDs and I was showing them to my daughter and I completely had forgotten 
having seen that, uh, you know, years before and watched it again recently. And it just reminded mm-hmm. me how much I love that story. But yeah, the reluctant dragon, he's a, he's a jolly old Jack dragon. He's, he's fun to watch. Oh, I love that. You know, as you're describing the story of the dragon, it kind of reminds me of that movie from, uh, from like the late nineties. I think it was dragon heart mm-hmm. had Sean Connery to the voice of the dragon. And mm-hmm. it was kind of along the same lines. I mean, the, the, the dragon and a quote unquote hero teamed up as the, the dragon would go in and, you know, terrorize towns. And then, uh, the hero would come in and save the day basically. And it was like a money-making ruse between them. Of course, that's a little bit of a darker, you know, turn on that kind of idea, but it's kind of right. what it Probably makes Probably why they of. got the inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> well, awesome. Okay. All right. So, uh, Dole Whip or Mickey bar or other. Mm, it's gotta be Dole Whip. Dole Whip. Me. Yeah. I like yeah. ice cream and I right. like chocolate covered ice cream, but there's just something about getting that Dole Whip on a hot day and sitting down at the Tiki Room, watching the gods come to life for that yes. courtyard before going in for the show. <laughs> it's, it's just for me, yeah. there's just almost nothing better. That's that's my top favorite of all time Disney treats, and uh, yeah, it just can't be beat in my mind. Okay, so let me ask you this: Dole Whip or Dole Whip float? <laughs> that's a hard one too i think for, it's got to be the traditional dole whip because i just have so many great memories about it but i do like a dole whip float for, on occasion and you know yeah. interesting story uh, to side note on that my wife is actually allergic to pineapple and it it bothers her that i like them so much because <laughs> you know we often share desserts and that's uh-huh. one that i get to very selfishly eat all by myself while she sits there and watches because there's just nothing else that she can get <laughs> at the dole she gets stand. the mickey bar right <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> nice nice all right uh, you know i'm i'm going to have to go with the mickey bar on that one <laughs> nothing wrong with that they're just as good i, I on any given day i could probably have one of each for sure there you go. Yep. Yep. And of course the, uh, the, uh, under the surface Disney hack here is where to buy the Dole Whip. Am I right? Yes. On the inside of the mm-hmm. tea room. Yeah, it, it's definitely at, uh, at Disneyland. Of course, if you do ever get out to Walt Disney world, they have a couple of really interesting places. You wouldn't expect to find them. There's even, I just recently learned that at the boardwalk resort, there mm-hmm. is a place that sells a drink that's not called the Dole Whip, but the cast members will wink at you if you ask them if it's the same thing while they're saying, <laughs> nope. Right. Just just <laughs> like how you asked me if there was a hidden Mickey in our logo on, <laughs> on, your, on, your, uh, on our guest appearance on your show. Yeah. I'll just kind of wink and say, you know, I mean, it's kind of coincidental, maybe. <laughs> there might know. be three circles that could yeah. if you <laughs> wanted to resemble you know. it. I'm not going to yeah. say they're not, but I'm not going to say they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And and so th- this is kind of the, the perfect segue into what is your favorite uh, Disney hack? My favorite Disney hack. So I do have quite a few that rotate or in and out of the top number one spot, but okay. there's it's been like choosing one. favorite children, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I have a very long list of favorite Disney hacks, but I do have one that tends to live at the top more often than the others. And so it has become my favorite Disney hack. And that is to take care of the cast members. Uh huh. I, as you know, I was a former cast member at Disneyland and with 50,000 people on a busy day, it's very easy for me to just answer your question uh, for the nearest bathroom and move you right along. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. Or get on the radio and call somebody to come help you if you're having a problem, but it ain't going to be my problem because I got 50,000 people behind you. I got to take care of, but if you take care of the cast members, they have a magical way of taking care of you that I don't see anywhere else I go. And it could be if somebody in custodial, somebody at the, at the merchandise at the store, somebody in the restaurants, doesn't matter where it is or who it is. They want to help you, but they want mm-hmm. to help people that recognize that they're standing around in the heat and they're dealing with thousands and thousands of people and they probably have their own personal problems to deal with. And yet they're there with a smile on making your day magical. And if you just recognize that and go do a little bit extra to take care of them, you'll be amazed at the amazing things they can do for you. 
Wow. Now, Joey, you're not saying that cast members are people too, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? <laughs> it kind of does, but it, yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You know, I, I think in general, I mean, people are people, you know, and sometimes it's hard to realize that. Like if you're dr- driving on the freeway and like, you know, somebody cuts you off or whatever, you know, I mean, there's a person in that car too, you know, and and people need to be treated like people and, you know, whether, especially when they're cast members too, you know, because, you know, they're, they're trying to make the magic for you. And <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, you, you know, know and they have the capacity to do things that you just wouldn't believe. And yeah, I've heard so many stories of people who have, are having a bad day. Cast member makes it great. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, or situations where they were just walking along and all of a sudden they were handed food and not like a sample, but like an entire entree it just to yeah. make their day great. Wow. And I love stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Don't, don't do it in the, uh, um, it, expecting to get something back, you know, do it because, right. you know, it's the right thing to do, you know, to, to treat people like people, you know, absolutely. absolutely. Yep. Okay, so th- this one wasn't in the the list of questions that I asked or that I sent to you, but um, I'm, I'm curious because you were a cast member and you were you said part of the part of uh, Disney uh, janitorial, right? Yep. Um, so, what is one of your favorite memories from having worked there? Oh man, Chris, I got so many. In fact, I'm working on a <laughs> list. Uh, Are you? Yeah, because I oh, I keep man. coming up with them, and if I didn't start writing them down, I wouldn't. You know, I keep forgetting them and remembering them again. It's been twenty years since yeah. I worked there, so uh, just a couple of uh, that come off the top of my head. One night, I got to go to the top of the Matterhorn at four a.m. during my lunch break, and I stood up there. The gentleman who was the foreman for all of the custodial cast members in the Fantasyland area, his name was Walt, mm-hmm. and he was uh, a longtime cast member. Obviously, he was working there in management. And so, somehow the word got to him that I was a fan and that I had gone to work there to really immerse myself in, in getting behind the scenes and deeper into the magic. And he just came to me one day and said, I heard you're a fan. Would you like to go up to the top of the Matterhorn and see what <laughs> the view looks like from up there? And he just we took an elevator to, I don't know, the third or fourth floor. And then we walked up several flights of stairs and then up a ladder or two. And the next thing I know we were popping out the top and I was looking down over all of Disneyland. And that was pretty spectacular. Another time I got to uh, hang out with an Imagineer who was one of the engineers that created the Indiana Jones adventure. And he gave me a personal walking tour through the attraction. Another time I got to, uh, I took a walking tour, a self-guided walking tour of the Haunted Mansion it was down for uh, some repairs or refurbishments. And so all of the attraction was shut down. All the lights were off. None of the audio, uh, audio animatronics were moving. None of the music was playing. And it was me and three other guys with flashlights. And we were walking down the hall with the floating candle. And there's a door. If you walk down the hall, there's a door to your left. And if you walk through that door, you're on sort of a a platform on the other side of the wall. And it was, there was actually some back of house lights that were on back there. So I walk out, I walk through the door, I turn off my flashlight. And if you walk down 10 or so more feet, because you can't walk down all the hallway to the candle, there's actually a, there's a screen there. I, sorry, Disney folks, I'm giving away a little bit of the magic here, but they don't want you throwing potatoes at the candle and knocking it down. So they, um, they put a screen up. So you go through the one door and then you walk down 10, 10 or so feet. There's another door and I walked in. Mm-hmm. And so I stepped through the second door and I did it at the exact same moment as the other three guys that were behind me stepped through the first door. Okay. And as I step into this room, the candle is directly in front of me and it's moving. It's doing its little dance where it's being pulled on the strings and making it look like it's floating there in slow motion. But I'm all alone in the hallway now and I'm on the other side of the screen. (laughs) Okay. And And you said everything was off. Yeah. Everything had been off up to that point. (laughs) And I just about stepped out of my body. I was so scared. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> then I realized that the guys, then they come following me through where I had just walked through with their flashlights lit. And I tell you what, I just, I thought I was just about to lose it. And the rest of the time I, w- I stayed very close to my group <laughs> and wow. uh, made sure that I didn't uh, step anywhere where I could have uh, had any problems. So yeah, there was, there's a lot of stories I could tell you. I mean, there's times where I spent a lot of nights on the Mark Twain. That was my primary job was, was cleaning and maintaining the Mark Twain every night to make sure it looked brand new the next morning. And I'd mm-hmm. heard stories of guys saying that they could be, you know, sweeping the deck with their head down and feel a presence and see a figure walking toward them across the deck of the Mark Twain. And then they'd look up and there wouldn't be anything there. So uh, story after story, one of, you know, a lot of my favorite memories were, you know, wow. you, we had mentioned on the Disney hack where you guys talked about, you know, always be listening, always you know, be, you know, listening for opportunities. And mm-hmm. uh, what it made me think of was being there and listening to the Frontierland music loop all night long or listening, you know, they'd sometimes turn that off and I can hear the New Orleans music loop. And mm-hmm. they'd sometimes turn that off and they play Phantasmic all night long. And just being able to <laughs> listen to that music all night long. Was, oh, man. It was great. Yeah, I got lots of good, great memories from that. That's cool. You know, I, I absolutely love listening to like the music loops of the, the area music and stuff, you know. Um, just, I mean, Main Street or, or, mm-hmm. or, uh, Tomorrowland, whatever, you know, and you can find a lot of those, uh, um, on YouTube, which is great, you know? Yeah. I like listening to them too. And, uh, you know, it's funny cause these days I listen to a lot of audiobooks and a lot of podcasts, but there's times where you just get so much of that. You need a break and going and listening to a Disney area loop mm-hmm. is a great way to take a break from all that and just kind of you know, have yeah. a, a mental moment where you're back in the parks again. <laughs> or like if, if, uh, if, you know, like for me at work or whatever, um, if I can't be like splitting my mind or attention or whatever, listening to a podcast, I'll, I'll put on some of the, uh, the area music and, you know, just kind of have that going like in my headphones or whatever, as I'm, you know, having to do more strenuous mental activity, <laughs> you know, design work or whatnot. So, Yeah. All right, so let's move on to the next question. What is your favorite bit of Disney inspiration? You know, like a quote or like a value or something like that. I was trying to remember the exact story when you suggested this or when you mentioned this question earlier. And that was there's so many stories of Walt in Disneyland early on, you know, when they were just figuring it out. You know, he had he had alligators in the rivers you know in in the jungle cruise right and the, he wanted real animals and he he just couldn't seem to make that work so they went with yeah. audio animatronic you know and uh it just there's so many things like that and, and i'm trying to remember the exact story and i think i did hear it on the sweep spot where somebody mentioned a story about how there was this you know they were trying oh i remember what it was they were charging oh, i love this story i'm so glad that I, I took a moment to try and remember it <laughs> did you know that they used to have paid bathrooms at disneyland i think i heard something about that so they used to have some so there were some that were like the urinals were free but i think and i don't think all of the toilets oh, I were think i remember the story paid, but yeah. there was yeah yeah so you know some uh, of yeah. the some of the toilets were, you had to pay a nickel to get in to use the toilet. And one day, Walt had to go to the bathroom. And he found himself at <laughs> Disneyland in a public bathroom. And he didn't have any change on him. And he couldn't get in to use the bathroom. And he eventually found a solution and was able to get to a bathroom and relieve himself. But then he went and t- talked to one of his facilities guys and said, we need to take out all of the nickel toilets. And the guy's like, well, we make $1,000 a week off that stuff. Mm-hmm. He's like, I don't care if I if I don't ever want a guest to ever go through what I did there, you know. And you guys are very entrepreneurial. I'm an entrepreneur, and I just wish the more companies had that thought process that Walt Disney had to say, I don't want my guests, I don't want my customer ever having to go through a bad experience. And if I had to go through it. And I own the place and I couldn't even get into the bathroom. You know, yeah. and it wasn't just the bathrooms, it was in every single detail that the man explored. He was always thinking, how is this going to impact how I feel about the experience I'm having here? How is this going to impact me as a just a regular Tom Dick or Harry who's enjoying the parks? Mm-hmm. And I just 
that's one of those things, right? That just makes you fall in love with the guy and in, in love Disneyland to this day mm-hmm. and, and everything about it is little stories like that. And so that's one of my favorite little nuggets of Disney gold. I, I love that. And I, I totally agree with that, you know, and there's just like so many um, different ways you can, uh, you can, you know, love the Disney company. I mean, being a magician, um, I, I create magic, you know, I mean, sleight of hand presentation, um, misdirection, all of that combining to create a magical moment and a magical experience for the people that I am performing for. Right. Mm-hmm. What company has been able to literally pretty much take magic and bottle it. You know, they, they create magic for people every single day. So, I mean, that's, that's one of the ways that I'm able to learn from Disney in show. Right. But then also, like you mentioned, both you and I are entrepreneurial. And so we can also look at and learn from and enjoy, um, you know, their, their business acumen and, and their, the way they run their companies and treat their employees and treat their guests, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and then there's like, you know, the, the movies and like all of the, all of that aspect to things, which goes back into show and story and presentation, you know, there's, there's just so much you can learn from the company, whoever you are. Yeah. And sometimes it's more important to lose a thousand dollars a week Mm -hmm. than that. And the customer that's going to say, you know what, if this is how they're going to run their business, I'm just going to go down the street to Knott's Berry Farm. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Wait, who? (laughs) (laughs) Oops. Can I say that here? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're fine. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, that's, that's great. Um, so, uh, Joey, what, uh, what one thing right now in life has you really excited? Hmm, boy. <laughs> well, definitely doing the podcast. It's the thing that keeps me up late and gets me up early in the morning. I have made a ton of great new friends like you and Megan. Uh-huh. I have, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just surrounded by my people. And for a long time, I, I pushed that down. You know, I, when I went to work at Disneyland, when I was 22, the idea was I'm going to go do this and for a year and then I'm going to go get a real job. And then I'm going to, I'm going to be a grown up because this is, this isn't quote unquote, the thing people do for their lives. This is sort of the the thing I do. I get it out of my system that it's the fun thing. It's the fun <laughs> job. And then I go have a real job and I go, and in fact, I love, you can retire business. there too. You know, <laughs> that's true. I'm planning on it. <laughs> <laughs> We'll but, do it together. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. We'll, we'll drive the cars down main street. <laughs> um, the, the thing about, you know, when I had decided to go to work there was, uh, you know, I, I wish I'd had the sense to know that you could make that something that you could do your whole life. I could have gone, I could have gone into Imagineering if I'd gotten an engineering degree or an art degree or something. I could have, there's so many more things I could have been involved with. And, I just couldn't see it at 22. And so, but today, you know, so that I, I put all that aside. In fact, I was, uh, when I left Disney, I opened an insurance agency. Like how much you can't get much more, you know, grown up and boring than that. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> here I am 20 years later and I find myself wanting to have conversations about Disneyland and to talk to people who are excited about that and to mm-hmm. listen to podcasts. I, I drove from Houston to Austin today. And I spent, you know, an hour or two when uh, it got quiet in the car. I had my family in the car. And uh, at one point it got quiet and I put my headphones in and I listened to, you know, I think it was Radio Harambe talking about the D23, right? So I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm obsessed with listening to all this stuff. And it just, it's, uh, it, I wouldn't say it's all consuming, but it's very, uh, it's it's the thing that's lighting my fire right now. And and uh, I would have been ashamed to say that in my 30s, but not, not anymore. It's. This is my tribe. This is my community. And I'm excited to, that I'm finally back being a part of it again. Yeah. I think the internet has made the world so much smaller, um, you know, to avoid <laughs> so a pun true. here. <laughs> um, and it that a small world, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, uh, you know, like, I don't know it. I, I think I think people, you know, do see like, you know, Disney fanatics and freaks as as that, you know, but 
there there are so many of them and it's enabled us all to connect you know and even people who haven't realized that they are really you know love disney so much or whatever like myself i didn't realize this until i started uh, thinking about this podcast in the book with my wife you know um and that's kind of like as things started to like you know progress or whatever um but that that's just something to 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 show you about how the community is too you know the the whole disney fan community it's just um you know re- really cool to be able to meet uh these people and connect on that level and it's to tell you the truth been one of the most welcoming groups that i've ever experienced you know yeah i agree so yep all right so now since we have learned um uh, so much about uh, Joey McGurr, who is, uh, you know, the host of the Disney Hack. Why don't you tell us about what you're doing? You know, tell us about your podcast um, and all of the things that you're hoping to do with that. You know, kind of give us, um, you know, your vision on that. What What are you doing? Yeah, well, it started. Well, it... <laughs> it's hard to say. It's hard so... to tell. <laughs> you're on episode seven, 17 now is that what you said or yeah i'm on, ep- I'm on episode this will yeah episode 17 we just recorded that and so that's going to go out on the 26th mm-hmm. of july and i um i have so here's here's what it is in a nutshell i didn't set out to create a podcast another disney podcast i was already listening to several and and enjoying them but i like most people I think who listen to a lot of podcasts about a particular subject, you tend to identify with the hosts. And I had had podcasts in the past. I actually have another one that I'm currently co-hosting right now. And I've had two others in the past. And so this isn't anything I'm new to. And I've, I've been blogging for about 11 years now. And podcasting is sort of my preferred method to blogging, right? It's, it's basically, audio blogging mm-hmm. and and it also gives me an opportunity when you blog i could i could interview somebody and write all that down but frankly that takes a lot of time a lot of editing i'm not that bad at it but i don't really have a lot of time for that and so yeah. i prefer to have these conversations and then um edit what i can from that audio put it out and and i figured out how to do that mm-hmm. podcasting isn't the easiest thing in the world but it's really not the hardest thing and it's take you know a couple of youtube videos just about anybody could figure out how to podcast um, so the podcast is a way for me to connect with other podcasters, frankly, and, and YouTubers and, and bloggers that love Disney stuff and to kind of be a part of my community. But it, there's one other aspect to it that I have mentioned on my show before, but I don't mention it a lot. And that is that oh, we went to Disney world in March and mm-hmm. my, uh, my wife and I were talking about, you know, Hey, when can we come back? And my wife is like, look, if you can afford it, you can come back as often as you want. And so I was like, oh, well, podcast is one way I could probably do that. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't have any sponsors. I haven't made a single dime off of it yet, but I am, uh, uh, you know, I, at some point, if, if it turns out that, you know, touring plans, knock, knock, uh, comes along and wants to, um, you know, buy me out. <laughs> I'm okay with that. So, you know, might buy me a you know, right. couple, couple trips to Disney World, whatever. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, if an undercover tourist <laughs> comes along and says, <clears throat> Kingdom like Strollers, <clears throat> yeah, Kingdom <throat> Strollers, uh, you know, <laughs> Coffee Coffee wants to uh, be an official sponsor, then I'm okay with that. And it's, you know, if it's, you know, it's going to afford me one trip a year, I'm, I'm cool with whatever. So, yeah, it, I, I don't mind saying that I have selfish reasons. I want to go, <laughs> I live in Texas and I want to go to yeah. Disneyland. And, um, <laughs> like every year, are, are, are you closer to Disney world or Disneyland? Uh, I'm probably right. in. I mean, I'm probably closer to Disney world. I'm in Austin. Uh-huh. So I'm sort of okay. on the Eastern side of Texas. I'm, they call it central Texas, but that's because there's just nothing West of us except El Paso, uh, which is 800 miles away. So, um, yeah, it's about 1500 miles, give or take going in either direction. Um, 
So as the crow flies, <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty much. And, and and I I'm originally from Southern California, so I definitely have an affinity for Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've only been to Disney World on two separate occasions, although they were for a week at a time. So I really immersed myself. But I mean, I've been to Disneyland. I, I estimate probably over four hundred times in my life, if you include the time I spent when I was working there. Right? I mean, right. It's yeah. so it's and there were days where I worked nights, and then I spent all day at Disneyland, and then I went back to work that night, and I didn't get any sleep because. <laughs> I was just there and I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to miss the chance to not get that much time at Disneyland. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, wow. Yeah. That's, that's great. So I, have got to ask, um, what is, what does your wife think about your obsession? (laughs) (laughs) Is is she (laughs) not as you are? No, she's not. In fact, she, you know, she would rather go to Europe or, uh, you know, Cancun. (laughs) Um, she likes Disney, but she's like, it's a once every four year kind of thing. And yeah, so we do differ there, but she's, she's glad that I'm passionate about something. I, I get passionate about a lot of things. And Me too. <laughs> yeah, clearly you're a magician and a graphic designer. You got a lot of, a <laughs> lot of interest and I'm kind of the same way. And so, um, this is just the, you know, something that I, I really grabbed hold of. I, the last time I got this excited about something was seven years ago when I started my company that pays all my bills and that's Mm. uh it's a social media marketing agency and so uh i'm very passionate about that but i've been doing that for some time now and so it's uh it's doing well and i now have the luxury of being able to put some of my mental uh energy into other things and and you guys i could clearly see we're we're uh very kindred spirits in the fact that you guys abhor a vacuum too obviously Mm -hmm. so you know once you find a little fragment of time uh, that you have free, you fill it up with, you know, lessons on uh, how to catch fantastic beasts or how to become yeah. a Jedi or <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know, write a book, have a kid, you know, whatever. So you gotta raise the kids <laughs> right. That's right. So <laughs> I, I'm kind of the same way. If I've got free time, I mean, I'm talking to you, it's uh, it's 1138 PM on a yeah. Wednesday night. And, uh, you know, I'm doing this because I, you know, I, I cause I can, and I want to, this is what I want to be doing at 11 o'clock at night. And so, um, yeah. Yep. It's the kind of thing that keeps me up late and gets me up early in the morning. Um, as well as our new baby. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that keeps us up late and, uh, up early in the morning as well. So, <laughs> yep. and all yep. night long. <laughs> yeah. So where, where can we find, um, the Disney hack? I am very easy to be found. You just said it, the Disney hack. You got to make sure you drop the, the in there. But even if mm-hmm. you use hashtag Disney hack, pretty much on any social platform, you're going to find me posting stuff on Instagram and Twitter. But uh, yeah, if you just search the Disney hack or go to the Disney you're going to find me. Okay. And can you take a, a just a short moment and kind of um, uh, define the Disney hack? Yeah. The Disney hack is actually a double entendre. Um mm-hmm. You're familiar with life hacks. Yes. They're kind of a f- popular term that came out with uh, the invention of the internet. It's little tips and tricks, little things. I, I, I like to refer to it as insider information. If I know how to do something a little bit better because I've got a different perspective and I teach it to you, you now know how to do something a little bit better because I taught you how to do something you didn't know before. You, I've mm-hmm. hacked, hacked your life. And so it, these, it's all about these tips and tricks that people know about saving time and money, but it's also about the intangible tricks like capturing the magic, like having the right perspective. Like you guys said in the show that we recorded for my podcast is, you know, listening. That's something that that's a hack and it might not seem like a big thing, but the ability to stand in a crowd of people and identify where opportunity is because it's behind you or to your side and your able to uh, hear the right words or catch a phrase like Boba Fett's going to be out and he's going to be lining up over there. And then you can position yourself to be second in line to meet him. That kind Mm -hmm. of stuff makes the magic that much better. And I want to share that. And I, and where the double entendre comes in is that, um, you know, a hack is also a person who's kind of, kind of, you know, a trickster or they're kind of full of themselves. They kind of, they kind of play it up like they're good, but they're in reality, they're not the best. Right. And right, so okay. it, it's sort of a, 
a self-effacing pun against myself. I, I like to bring people on like you guys to share your tips and tricks and talk about your book that's loaded with tips and tricks and, and other podcasters and bloggers that have been doing this for 20 years or 30 years and sharing their tips and ideas so that other people have an access point to some of the best tricks for maximizing mm -hmm. either their dollar or their time or the magic when it comes to visiting a Disney park. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I like that, and it also kind of shows that you're you're not afraid to to let people know that you don't know everything, which is one of the reasons why you're bringing people onto your show to to get their their knowledge and their uh, you know have them weigh in on on certain subjects as well. So that's I like that, and in in listening to your show, I mean, like right out the gate, um, you know, you sound great. I love the music that you've picked for it, and uh, you know, you guys have really awesome information and i was actually surprised at, at to some of the uh um some of the tips you were sharing and things that i wouldn't have even um considered and i'm like wow dude this is like this is some crazy awesome stuff so <laughs> you guys are doing a you're, you're doing a great job over there thank you very so, much i really appreciate it yeah check him out the disney hack uh he's on uh he's everywhere you can find uh find podcasts um, and, uh, you said, uh, the, uh, do you have a website as well? The Disney or, the, yeah, the Disney yeah. So, and, uh, you're also on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and I believe Instagram too, correct? Uh, yeah, those are the three main ones that I spend most of my time on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I started a group like all the other Disney podcasters out there, but it's called the, the hack pack. <laughs> and the idea yeah. is that I, people like like you guys, the shepherds, can come in there and if somebody has a question, they can ask the Hack Pack. So you guys are officially members of the Hack Pack. Uh, you guys are Disneyland pros. And if somebody wants to know about visiting Disneyland with your kids, you guys can drop a link to your show, drop a link to a, you know, a page of your book and uh, or even a link to buy the book or whatever you want to just say, hey, here, <laughs> here's the tip I know. Here's what the Hack Pack can bring to whatever it is you guys are trying to find. And I know there's lots of groups out there like that. So this is sort of my own little personally curated group of Disneyland experts or Disney World experts talking about what they know best. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Joey, thank you for coming on to our show. Everybody, check out the Disney Hack. It's a wonderful show. You guys are going to love it. So I just wanted to give a shout out and just a just a quick thanks to Joey McGurr for um, inviting us onto his show to you know talk about what we're doing with Go Mouse Scouts and our book and stuff. And I also wanted to thank him for joining us on our show as well. And I really hope you guys check out his show. It's a lot of fun. He um, you know he gives some great tips on visiting the Disney parks. Uh, mainly Walt Disney World, and he has a lot of wonderful insight that I think you guys are going to like, and he's super fun to listen to. So be sure to check it out, um, thedisneyhack.com, and he's also in the Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher Radio, um, I believe iHeartRadio, uh, but uh, you know pretty much wherever you can find fine uh, podcasts. So check him out and let him know that Go Mouse Scout sent you. All right. Take care. This thing, ninety eight. Papa, my dad.